everyone, and welcome to the next video on Python programming. And this time we're going to talk about try accept blocks. <clears throat> now, try accept blocks are also called try catch blocks uh, in other programming languages. And they are literally a block of code where you're going to try and do something and catch any errors that come up, right? So we're just going to set up a thing. We're going to try something. Then we're going to catch anything that might be a problem. It's a very, very simple way of protecting yourself against any errors and allowing the program to keep going. The thing you have to realize is any any error that's thrown in the try block and it stops there and goes into the accept block. So it's very, very simple to do. I'm going to start out with a little bit of code that we did in our last video, this little piece of uh, uh, printing uh, uh, in a loop. So we're going to run this little piece of printing in a loop. Now, I know, because I know how the REPL system works, that we can't write to files in REPL, right? Because we don't have access to the server and all that sort of stuff, we, don't have, we, we can't write to files. So if I was to try and write something to a file in REPL by using a file writing piece of code like this, this will not work. Now, I know that this will not work because we don't have access to our documents and text files and those sorts of things inside of REPL. So if I run this, we get our red code up here that says, I know something's happened. It runs the code, the first little bit. It says that the it's printed zero. It's printed that this is divided by divisible by two, leaving aside the mathematical problem there. And then it goes, there's a traceback problem. So how do I get around this sort of thing? How do I stop this from, from being a major problem for me? How do I recover from this error? We put it into a try catch block. Now try accept block is as simple as this. We're going to, Put this into a try block. So try. <clears throat> then I need to indent all of my code because uh, we use indents in Python for those sorts of things. And now I'm going to catch an error, or I'm going to accept an error. So I'm going to put this in for an exception. <laughs> so <clears throat> when I want to find this exception, when I want to catch this exception, I'm going to print something that will be printed to show that we've actually caught this. And we will print, this is where the error comes. You can print the, the error here. Now, the advantage of this, and this is where things get very, very complicated, and I'm not going to go into this because I, we don't have the need to right now. We're only doing intro to Python now. But you can actually catch individual types of error. So this one, for example, says a no such file in directory error. You can have a file not found error that is actually caught in here, and you can print that back. But the bit that I want to show you in here is if I run this, it goes to's trouble, and then it tries to hit this, throws an error, and now it catches that exception by printing this. So we have this bit where we can actually catch, excuse me, any errors that are thrown up here. So now we have a way of protecting ourselves from errors. And you can use this in your error checking to show different things. Now, the disadvantage in the simplistic use of this is it doesn't show you where the error is. But there may be times, for example, if you've got a loop like I have here that you want to drop out of it, rather than using the break statement, you can use this. Now, the other thing that try accept blocks have is they have something called a finally code. Finally will always run. So I will print in here, this is always a runner. This is always going to run because as soon as it's dealt with whatever errors are in here, it's caught all the things in there, all that stuff is done, it then drops down here and this is always going to be played. So as I show here, it does this, it runs the two's trouble, then it hits the error, brings up the error code, and then it finally says, this is always going to run. So that's where our try catch blocks come into play. They're useful for catching errors. They're useful for testing, especially if we think something that could have an error in it. So if you're writing to a file or any of those sorts of things, you can do those in this bit. I hope this has been useful to you. Uh, if you have any errors or any problems with this, please feel free to drop me an email. And as always, thank you for watching.